1985 and 1986, the original Teddy Ruxpin talking toy was a worldwide bestseller. But as the decade wore on, and Worlds of Wonder's portfolio of talkers proliferated, the public's fascination with talking toys began to taper off. This led to several efforts to find new, innovative use cases for the talking toy technology, and also spurred an initiative to put Teddy Ruxpin into other, non-talking toy products. This is most likely what prompted the creation of the Teddy Ruxpin electronic telephone. Arriving in 1990 and discontinued in 1992, the electronic telephone is one of the final Teddy Ruxpin products to be released before the license was transferred to PlaySchool following Worlds of Wonder's demise. Despite not being as popular as some of Teddy's other products, it would go on to sell over 62,000 units in its short release. If you grew up in the 80s and 90s, the Teddy Ruxpin telephone should remind you of what phones of that time looked like. Simple plastic handsets with a speaker at the top and a microphone at the bottom, and a concave form factor for you to comfortably place your chin inside while it rested on your shoulder. Were it not for the logo just above the microphone, you might actually mistake this for a standard telephone. The phone also has the benefit of being wireless. That is, there is no base to hang it up on and no cable to tether the phone to anything. Children could walk around the house with the phone without the fear of running out of slack on their imaginary phone lines. The number pad is a standard 12 button layout with zero through nine, pound, and asterisk. Each of the numbers is designated with letters just like on a real telephone though they serve no functional purpose here. Below the number pad is a green light. This will glow when a number is pressed, when the phone is ringing, or when a message or voicemail is waiting for you. Unboxing the telephone is pretty straightforward. The only accessories you'll get are a standard warranty card and a small telephone book. The book's cover has a pretty great illustration of Teddy talking on his own telephone. Inside, there's more than you might expect. The first couple of pages talk about Teddy and Grubby's friendship and how important it is for them to keep in touch. Then it introduces the idea of a telephone as a way people can stay in contact with each other. A brief history of the telephone is given, from its invention by Alexander Graham Bell in the late 19th century, all the way up to the mention of a future in which picture phones would let us see who we were talking to. Imagine that. After that, you'll get a brief lesson in proper telephone etiquette. For example, how to introduce yourself, if you're making a call, or how to answer the phone properly. This is largely what the Teddy Ruxpin telephone was designed to do. Teach children how to properly communicate while on the phone. The rest of the book is a manual explaining how to use the telephone. And the final page allows parents to record numbers for their children to use, like their work numbers a trusted neighbor, grandparents, school, or their best friend. The manual also gives you a 1-800 number to call in case you run into any technical issues, but unfortunately, dialing this with a real phone produces no results. The line dropped immediately. The Teddy Ruxpin telephone performs four main functions. Making calls, receiving calls, receiving voicemails, and dialing your own phone number. You won't have to worry about memorizing anyone's phone number while using the Teddy Ruxpin telephone. You can talk to either Teddy or Grubby using the phone. Both characters are assigned a set of auto-dial numbers on the keypad. To talk to Teddy, just press one of the following numbers. 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, or 0. To talk to Grubby, you'll press 3, 5, or 7. The phone will beep indicating it registered the button press. You'll have a second to raise the phone to your ear and a dial tone will play. Then, your character of choice will answer the phone and introduce themselves. Hi, this is Teddy Ruxton. The technology is actually sophisticated enough to know when you finish talking before Teddy will continue. So as long as you're talking, he won't interrupt. Hi, Teddy. This is Vincent. What's your favorite kind of animal? Bears. Uh-huh. If you don't respond at all, Teddy will ask if you're still there. If you don't say anything, he'll say goodbye and hang up. Hi, this is Teddy Ruxton.
Are you there? Bye bye. Most of the conversations are patterned the same. Teddy or Grubby will introduce themselves, then ask you a question like, What are you doing today? What's your favorite game? What's your favorite kind of music? Or what's your favorite book? After you've given an answer, Teddy or Grubby will usually give some sort of acknowledgement. They will either ask a follow-up question or tell you it's time to go and say goodbye. Hi, this is Grubby. Hi Grubby, this is Vincent. I'm gonna clean up my room today. It's a mess. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of work. Have you cleaned up your room today? I have not. Well, it's time for me to go. Okay. There is a trick to continuing to talk if you don't want to hang up just yet. After answering one of Teddy's questions, you can press a button on the keypad and he will ask you a new question, starting the cycle over. Hi, Teddy. This is Vincent. What's your favorite silly song? Old MacDonald Had a Farm. Really? Yep. Would you sing it for me now? Oh, I'm not a very good singer. What's the weather like where you live? It's very clear and sunny. Uh-huh. Not a cloud in the sky. What are you going to do today? Make a video. Really? All about this telephone. If you don't press any buttons, the conversation will eventually end. It wouldn't be a real friendship if you were the only one making calls, so it's possible to have Teddy or Grubby call you. The telephone is designed so that parents could have Teddy or Grubby call their child and give them the experience of answering the phone. There's a pretty clever mechanism involved to give the illusion the calls are spontaneous. A timer. You can press four, five, and six simultaneously, and the phone will wait 15 seconds before ringing, giving the parent enough time to place the phone within earshot of the child. If you have a more elaborate plan and need more time, you can press the row of 7, 8, and 9 together, and the phone will wait 5 whole minutes before ringing. You don't need to press any buttons to answer the phone. Just speak directly into it and Teddy or Grubby will greet you. One other trick up this phone's sleeve is the ability to have Teddy leave a message or voicemail. Just like receiving calls, it seems this is designed for parents to surprise their children. Pressing the top row of buttons, one, two, and three simultaneously, will cause the phone to beep and then the green light at the bottom of the handset will begin to blink once every two seconds or so, indicating there is a message waiting for the child. You can press either the asterisk or pound sign to hear the voicemail. Teddy will greet you, saying how sorry he is that they were not able to talk when he called, and to please give him a call back when you can. Hi, this is Teddy Rexton. I'm sorry you weren't home when I called. What are you going to do today? I really want to talk to you, so call me when you can. Bye-bye. The final function of the Teddy Ruxpin telephone is designed to teach a child to memorize and dial their home phone number. Parents can press the last row of buttons on the keypad, asterisk, zero, and pound, and then dial their home phone number up to 10 digits. They will get a jingle indicating that the number has been entered properly and stored. From that point, 
If a child is able to properly dial the programmed number, they'll receive a dial tone and Teddy will answer, congratulating them on successfully dialing their number. Hi, this is Teddy Ruxton. Hey, you know your phone number. That's great. All of these functions work surprisingly well, even 30 years later. If there's one observation to be made, it's that the buttons on this phone, at least on the one I purchased, are extremely sensitive. Even bumping the buttons lightly with my fingers register the press, which initiated more phone calls to Grundo than I'd anticipated. The phone is definitely not designed for adult use, as the microphone is set deep into the bottom of the handset and didn't line up naturally with my mouth if I rested the phone on my shoulder. Smaller users should have no problem using it, but I had to hold the phone away from my face just to make sure it caught my voice. My first call was dropped because Teddy couldn't hear me. Your phone calls will all begin to sound the same after about half an hour of talking. There's only so many questions Teddy and Grubby can ask and only so many variations of sequences the conversation can move in. If a child were to use it once or twice a week, the novelty might last. But as a child's daily driver, I imagine they'd lose interest once they realize that most of these questions and responses remain the same regardless of what they say. The only other issue with the phone is the sound quality. Whether it's by limitations of the available technology or the fact that Worlds of Wonder was spiraling into bankruptcy and was basically manufacturing this on a shoestring budget, Teddy and Grubby's voices both sound shallow, synthesized, and artificially modulated. Hi, this is Grubby. Perhaps I'd feel differently if this was 1990 and this was still a flashy new toy, but in 2020, it sounds muffled and awkward, like I'm talking to a robot version of Teddy and Grubby rather than the characters themselves. Like most retro toys, how well the Teddy Ruxpin telephone holds up today is purely subjective. The technology and implementation are pretty impressive for the time, with the phone able to recognize when a person is and isn't speaking, and the ability to store pre-programmed phone numbers. If nothing else, it begs the question of what a modern, programmable Teddy Ruxpin phone might look like, using AI to analyze answers and create appropriate responses. Until then, this is still your best option if you want to know what it's like to get a call from your friends in Grundo.